different approach tonight. Uh, Councilman Hunter has asked for a point of uh, privilege uh, to make a presentation. So before we go into the regular part of the agenda, I will defer to Councilman Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Brandon, I don't know if you're back there. Can you put that on the screen for me? Ah, there it is. And our, I don't know if you can put it on our screens here, but it's behind us. Uh, if, if the council remembers a couple of years ago, um, Jackie Sullivan from Bakersfield sent out a letter that requested all cities to put the uh, In God We Trust above their logos, which this city council did do. We voted on it. It was unanimous, and we put it above our logo. Well, what I've done, and I didn't ask the council, but I paid for it anyway, is we made some new uh, lapel pins. Lapel pins, Mr. Rocho. <coughs> oh, wow. Mr. Cabriolis. Thank you. Roberts, I'd like to have our first newest pin. Thank you. This is our actual pin above us here. Uh, it goes along with our old lapel pin. And God above the uh, lapel, above the pin has in God we trust, just like it says here. I think that's one of the greatest things we've done. So that's to thank you all for doing that. It's a limited edition. We bought about 2,000 of these, and that's all we're going to do. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Very thank much. you, Bob. Well, that plays nicely into our normal routine. The custom and habit of this council is to begin every meeting first uh, with an invocation, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, the invocation will be given by Pastor Ray Gemmy from the Jubilee Community Church. That will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by our Chief of Police, Captain Mark Taylor. God, we do affirm our trust in you tonight, and we want to thank you for this council. I pray your blessing upon them and every decision that they have to make tonight, that you will just give them wisdom and that your peace will reign supremely, not only in our city, but in this meeting as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Color on the screen. Proclamation I'm going to give.
therefore I tarry you call. I am going to open concurrently all of the agendas for each of the boards that we represent here tonight, the Library Board, the Water Board, Redevelopment Agency, the Rail Authority, uh, the Airport Authority, um, any other authorities that I've missed. The first item on every agenda for every entity is public comment. Public comment is that opportunity afforded by state statute for anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council in any of its representative capacities on any subject that is within our purview and jurisdiction. Under public comment, because we have no idea what the presentation may consist of, as a general rule, the city council will not respond to people who make whatever presentation they elect to make under public comment. We ask you to fill out the white cards which are available in the foyer, pass them to the city clerk who will pass them to me. The reason for that is that way we will have the information necessary to communicate with those who share with us uh, at the public comment section. We may need to ask for more information. We may need to invite you back. We may need to notify you that an item has been scheduled for a future meeting in order to address whatever the matter is uh, that, uh, that you bring to our attention. Public comment is limited to three minutes, and uh, we will try to, uh, to hold you to that as best we can. So I have received uh, a few cards under public comment. I'm going to call them in the order that they were presented. And uh, the first card is Al Cotillo. How you doing, guys? I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a while. Uh, I'm here because you guys are trying to raise the fees for the sewer and something else. I can't remember what the other thing is, but you well, know, the we sewer need... fee, Mr. I don't want to cut you off, but if you're here for the specific item to raise fees, uh, that's going to come up as uh, as an agenda item in a few minutes on a regular agenda uh, that's already set. Uh, well, sewer fees are on as a protest hearing. Well, I'd also like to say that you know. Uh, you guys are spending ten million dollars on a clubhouse for a golf course, which is ridiculous. When this city needs so many more things, we need police. We need a police laboratory up here. When these guys get evidence on a crime, they have to send everything down the hill, and sometimes it's three or four months before they get the evidence back. Now, I made an appointment with Rita Vogler. I try to get one with you to get all four communities together to chimp in and maybe build a police lab, a better police station, and hire more police. Well, I had my appointment with Rita Vogler, and she was very excited about it. She thought it was a great idea. And she thought all four communities should chip in and do a lot of things together. I never even got a response from you. So 
what do you say? I don't know. You know, I don't know what to say about that. But I was trying to do something in earnest for the community, and uh, evidently you didn't want to meet with me. Uh, we got a city manager over here who's making a fortune, who's absolutely no control over his employees at all, because I had a problem a while back, and he couldn't do anything about his employee. That's in the past, but I'm more concerned now about the city getting more police. I mean, there's people getting killed up here every day, and you guys are spending $10 million on a clubhouse for a golf course. Do you think that you should be reelected for that? Any, any, well, I know you can't answer me, but I mean, I would never do that. I would make sure the people up here are safe first. Without safety, you have nothing. My neighbor was robbed the other day in broad daylight. A little old lady lives by herself. I live on the golf course where there's a lot of elderly people. Now there's a lot of scumbag moving in up there and they're destroying the whole neighborhood. And, and I had, personally, I walk my neighborhood at night by myself. And I got a big light and I shine. I've scared a lot of people away and I take damn good care of the golf course behind my house. We appreciate that. You're three minutes but, up. Thank you, know, you Mr. I, I would just hate to see money going to a, a clubhouse, 10 million bucks, and we need police up here. Thank you, Mr. Cotillo. Norm Miller. <clears throat> Norm Miller, a little disappointed tonight, and then kind of going to surprise you a little bit too, but I forgot one of the things I wanted to mention to you. But one thing I do want to mention, and I think this is a good idea if it could be continued, is you had a closed session before the meeting tonight, and I think that would be nice if you could do that every time. That way people will know what happens in the closed sessions, because I think about 95% of the closed sessions, nobody knows what happens, except for maybe one or two people that are here. The other item was um, I've heard and seen problems over there at Park Avenue and Palmdale Road. I guess there's some problem with left-hand turns into the gas station and things like that. The other day I was down in Hesperia. You well, know, I've been down there a lot, but I noticed down there that they have a, uh, on Main Street, they have an area that's similar, and they put those white pipes up in the uh, center to keep people from making left turns and, I guess, making turns out of there. So I just think maybe you might look at something like that uh, as an idea for Park Avenue and Palmdale Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Dorothy Miller. Mayor and council members, <clears throat> as I've said in the past, I feel the city's going downhill. We are supposed to be business friendly. Let new, let yet new businesses are showing up in, <clears throat> in other towns, and we are losing current businesses. Atlanta, Apple Valley, and Hesperia seem to be getting all of the new businesses, which means we're losing sale tax money. Also, why are we losing long-time employees? Is there something wrong here? I feel that the council members that are running for re-election had better be aware because people are getting fed up with the council because things are not getting done. They're brought up, they're not getting done. We don't follow through. And this council needs to start following through with the things that we talk about doing because people really are fed up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Those are all the cards that I have under public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who had intended to address the council under item one, public comment on any of the agencies that uh, represent here tonight? If not, then we will go to the library board and I will turn that matter over to Councilman Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only item on the agenda for the vote is our consent calendar, items A through J, which are the minutes of the meetings from June 5th, June 19th, July 17th, August 7th, August 21st, September 4th, September 18th, August 2nd, or excuse me, October 2nd, October 16th, and November 6th. Move approval. Second. Move and second. May we vote? That concludes the library agenda. Next is the rail authority. We have uh, no revisions to that agenda that I'm aware of. 
Assuming that there are none, then we have the consent uh, calendar and the minutes of the various meetings enumerated as A through J on the agenda. Move for approval of the consent calendar. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. May we vote? That concludes the rail authority. We now go to the airport authority. Again, there's no revisions to the agenda that I'm aware of. Assuming there are none, we will go to the consent calendar. Move for approval. Second. Seconded. May we vote? We also have uh, a request to approve amendments to the Southern California Logistic Airport current rules and regulations. We've been provided with that material uh, prior to tonight. Questions or comments from members of the authority? Not a motion would be in order. Second. Moved and seconded. May we vote? Item four is a request to authorize the execution of a memorandum of understanding with the Benham companies. Again, we've been provided with the staff material in support of this item. Questions or comments from members of the authority? Not a motion would be in order. Second. Seconded. May we vote? That concludes Council the airport Member authority. Almond, I'm sorry, I'm missing your vote. Now we have it. That concludes the airport authority. We go to the redevelopment agency. Again, I'm unaware of uh, any revisions uh, to uh, the redevelopment agency agenda. Item three is the consent calendar. Approval. Second. Vote. Item four is a request to approve an amendment, and amendment number two, to the contract for professional services with Epic Land Solutions and approve an additional appropriation in the amount of 350000 for the Old Town Redevelopment Project Area Land Acquisitions. Vote. Item five is a request to approve amendment number one to the auto park at Victor, excuse me, at Valley Center Association formation document and approve an additional appropriation in the amount of $100,000 for the <coughs> auto park marketing. Second. Vote. Item six, request to approve an owner participation agreement between the Victor Hill Redevelopment Agency and High Desert Investment Partners, LLC, and approve an additional appropriation in the amount of $400,000 for the owner participation agreement. Questions or comments from members of the redevelopment agency? If not, a motion would be in order. Approval. Vote. That concludes the redevelopment agency. Uh, the water district agenda. Again, I'm unaware of any revisions to the agenda. Item three is the consent calendar. Second. Seconded. May we vote? Item four is a request to adopt resolution number VWD 08002. Uh, before uh, we go into that resolution, I believe that our uh, water guru, Reggie Lampson, is going to share some, uh, some good news with us. Uh, Mr. While Mr. Lampson is approaching, uh, we're checking the records. This may be the first time in the history of government that uh, government fees have been decreased. You're stealing his thunder. <laughs> it's ask, exciting thunder. I want to ask one question. Um, I was under the impression when we joined the two water districts, we had to wait one year before we did anything, made any changes. That was raised. That was for increases, um, Madam Councilwoman. That was all. I, I thought it was just we couldn't increase for a year. But then I don't for know. No, that we, we weren't to do any changes at all. Wouldn't make any sense, though, if you have some kind of an extraordinary savings that you can do, you'd be barred from doing well, that. I'm not knocking the savings. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking the savings. I was just under the, you know, the impression that we weren't going to make any changes at all for just one year. I, was I a, thought I was under the impression that it was for increases, but, you know, certainly a decrease is 
I'm not going to knock his ears. I, I, I thought it was just increased, too. I, don't know, was, I was at the hearings down there, the adoption hearings. I honestly don't remember. Mr. Barman actually has the resolution from LAFCO with that detail, and he's real good at details. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Under conditions 9 and 10, the, um, uh, the fees and taxes and assessments were to remain unchanged and continue for a period of 24 months or until the board of directors of the successor district shall have duly adopted a uniform schedule of rates, fees, taxes, assessments, and, and charges, which is what this resolution does. So it says that they're, they're frozen until they can be uniform, made uniform and, and the same between the districts as far as possible without uh, in, encumbering one group of consumers with debt from another district. Any other questions? No, I thought it was a year. It's easy, 24. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, we had... Uh, uh, District 1 had no debt, District 2 had debt, and, and that was the reason why the two were, why there was two assessment districts, <coughs> uh, or improvement districts, I believe they're called. The, we have um, looked at all the data and determined that uh, the debt in District 2 can be paid for uh, by uh, taxes that are collected only in District 2. Uh, we'll apply those taxes to pay the debt, and then the balance of that debt can be paid by a uh, monthly service charge. It's currently 975, and because we're using the taxes to pay down that uh, debt, we can reduce that from 975 to 575. So that uh, monthly rate goes down. Then also by efficiencies gained by um, grouping the HR department, the finance department, and other city departments, uh, we are, we're able to reduce our expenses and also by consolidating our um, crews in the field, and so we operate both of the systems concurrently, so we don't have any redundant operations, uh, we reduced expenses there. So uh, we were able to reduce the um, uh, commodity rate. We also changed the structure to be like District 1, where we don't have a tiered structure, so the more water you use, the more water you pay. It's, it's just a fixed rate. It's $1.18 per unit. Uh, what we do tier is the monthly service charge. So if you use up to 35 units, it's 14 bucks, and then after that, it goes up to 28 bucks to encourage conservation. Uh, and we had, we've had this format in place at District 1 for about a year, and it was, uh, it's been working very well, and now we want to uh, make them similar in, in District 2. The commodity rate will be the same in both districts, and the, the only difference will be that monthly service charge of 575. The net result of this is uh, a reduction in District 2's rates. Um, the, the average user will see savings of around 14, 15 percent, but uh, it, we, we're going to provide a billing stuffer to explain uh, this rate change. And on the back of the billing stuffer, it has all of the um, uses. So if they use uh, 67 units one month, they can go to this chart uh, that we're going to provide and say, okay, I would have paid this. Now I'm paying this. I saved 10 bucks, and that's a 15% saving. So they can answer their questions uh, with this billing stuffer. Um, so we're real excited that uh, we're able to reduce things. <laughs> so, anyway. Questions or comments from members of the council? Ms. Allman, did you want to make the motion? Oh, absolutely. Is there a second <laughs> to Mrs. Allman's <laughs> motion? Second. Moved and seconded. May we vote? Good job. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That means my water bill is going to be under $20 now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, we'll go to the city council agenda. We've already taken care of public comment. I'm unaware of any revisions to the agenda with the exception of agenda item number seven, which will be continued to February 5th, uh, 2008. So if you're here for agenda item seven, it's not envisioned that the council will take any action on that. Uh, item three is a continued appeal hearing. Uh, we have been requested to not move forward with the appeal 
and that uh, this matter be requested, be continued at the request of Aquana West Management until July 15, 2008, or unless otherwise requested by the developer. Are there any questions or comments of members of the Council uh, concerning the continued appeal hearing? Mr. DeBorton asks, is there anything from a legal perspective we need to have in the record with regard to this? No, other than the, uh, the, um, the appellant is requesting that we enter into a tolling agreement some be signed by the city manager to reflect uh, the continuation of the appeal. Okay. No, we're not there yet. We're almost there. This has to do with an appeal of a previous action of the Planning Commission. Item four is a public hearing to hear arguments for or against the adoption of proposed resolution 08034, which, if adopted, would revise the sewer user fees for the use of the city sewers and would rescind existing resolution 04202 in its entirety. And uh, I'm advised by uh, the city clerk that because this is a protest public hearing, that we will not finalize the decision at the time we conclude the public hearing portion because the city clerk will have to complete a tabulation of the votes uh, for or against. So we'll open the public hearing in just a second. We'll take testimony and then we will uh, leave item four, complete the rest of the agenda. Then we'll come back at the end and, uh, and revisit item four and we'll get the results of the election. From Mayor the Caldwell, clerk. just for clarification, at the close of the public hearing, whatever additional protests are received, I can just simply add to the number that we've received already. So you'll and be just able to, announce that. All right. the, yeah. Then, with that, we will open the public hearing. We will take testimony from anyone who wishes to be heard uh, for or against proposed resolution 08034, which deals with revising the sewer user fees. I have two cards. First one is from Martin Spangler. Back in uh, 1990, I purchased uh, some rental property. Figured it was uh, time to make some profits in this uh, in this area, and so since then I haven't had done nothing to the property except for inside and out, change different tenants. And in 1997, uh, I decided to get a property management company, Century 21, over in Apple Valley, and uh, I've got 10 years of charges that they had given me here, and uh, tallied up on the sewer fees. Uh, the, before 1997, they didn't have no record. Well, the records from 1990 to 97, I just have those records myself. And when I had received this letter uh, from uh, your department here for those years of fees, it, uh, I, it rang a bell. And I said, well, why, since 1995, you haven't increased substantially the fees, and now you're gonna, you're gonna substantially increase them 25%. Okay, and that's a pretty big lot. So I went through all the different, just this past 10 years, from 97 till present, and a significant raise was from, I have from the first month of 96, $13 for sewer fees. Three years later, another $16, so that's $3 raise in three years. And then back in 1990, uh, 2001, $19, it's another $3. And uh, the end of 1990, uh, 2001, $22 of the sewer fees. And it comes up to 2002, still 2000 or $22. And then it comes up to the end, around the eighth month of uh, 2002, $25. And then I come up to 2004, and it's $25. And the only small raise that you have done since then till present is only 48 cents. And you're saying here on your letter that you haven't re raised the, the fees significantly since 1995, which I think you're wrong because $3 out of $13, it's about 25% or more. So you've got six raises of 25% since 1996, okay? And I've owned the property since 1990, and I've got all these charges for 10 proven right here if you'd like to keep these copies. And I've never been hooked up to the sewer system since 1990, since I took over the property. So I've been charged for 17 years of sewer fees, which you got, your, your department owes me for 17 years. 
And uh, I called the Century 21, and they've been on this. And I have a gentleman in that department, and this week they're going to be doing a dye test to prove that I am on a septic tank system. And how can you, how can your department in this city miss something for 17 years, not knowing that I'm not hooked up, or not myself, but many others, and being charged that many years for sewer fees, which I should not have been charged? Well, I don't have an easy answer for that. The individuals that uh, are responsible for those functions are here. They've heard what you've had to say, and I will uh, ensure that they respond to you forthwith with regard to that. The only other thing I can say at this point is that while I don't have an answer for why you weren't hooked to the sewer, I mean, I, I, there's no way I could begin to... Well, it's, it's personal cost. I don't know the reason, and, right. and I don't want to speculate. But if you've been receiving those bills all these years and paying, and you knew not you knowing that I was I was paying a fee, because if you look under the uh, the different sections on the receipts themselves, they show uh, solid waste service fee thirty eight dollars and twelve cents, sewer user fees. Okay, it's just like any other agency. You have all these fees, and you assume that the city or whatever agency are correct, your electric, your water, gas, whatever, okay, phone bills, all these fees. So you figure, okay, they know what they're doing, I pay it. But when I, uh, the light bulb came up, now wait a minute, I'm not on the sewer system, why should I be charged these? So that's when I went to uh, Aaron uh, over at Century 21, and he has the, all the history for 10 years, and I've got seven more years to get, and I've got here from 19, uh, 2007, Twenty-five dollars and forty-eight cents. That's just for the, the are first those month. copies that you're going to leave with us, or? if you would like. Well, I want somebody to look at your at your issue. Uh, the, well, there is a gentleman in that department, and his name is John Garcia. Okay, and I don't I know whether Mr. Garcia is here, but but the the department heads who are responsible for these functions are here in, in the audience tonight. Are they? They've heard what what your issue is. So if you want to leave us with copies, you can leave them with the city clerk. Well, I mean, if they can make copies, and then I can keep these, because I got these, and I... I it's up to you. Right. In, in any event, we, we, we know what your concern is, and right. the appropriate department heads will investigate it, and we'll get back to you. Okay. So that's why I'm opposing, because your letter states 1995 is the significant change in rate has been six times over since 1995. Thank you, Mr. Spangler. Okay, thank you. The next card on this item is Norm Miller. Norm Miller. No, I have one from you that says Norm Miller. Oh, water number four. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Those are all of the cards that I have that have indicated an interest or a desire to address the council on this public hearing dealing with sewer user fees. If no one else, I'm going to close the public hearing. I will now defer to the city clerk for the tally and results of the election. There were a total of 23,304 protest forms that were mailed out. And with tonight's uh, protest that has been received, we have a total number of protests in the amount of 789. This would require a uh, majority protest of the number that was mailed out of 23,304 in order for it to fail. So since we don't have a majority, it, it would pass. All right, then the- Mr. Mr. Mayor, before you place it to a vote, if I could uh, provide a little bit of background, and it's unfortunate that Mr. Cotillo left because he raised the question. The city of Victorville is a member of the Joint Powers Authority, Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority, as is Hesperia, Apple Valley, and the County of San Bernardino. And that agency charges the city of Victorville for treating uh, the wastewater that flows to that authority. This rate increase is an increase that was adopted by the Board of Directors of the VVWRA and this rate increase that the city is charging is an absolute pass-through to that authority. None of this increase in sewer fees 
uh, goes to the city of Victorville, it all directly passes through to the Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Somebody want to make a motion? So with moved. Regard second. Moved and seconded to adopt proposed resolution 08034. May we vote? Animus, item five is a consent calendar. These items have been de <coughs> predetermined to be routine and non-controversial. They'll be adopted with one motion unless there's a request for removal. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. May we vote? I'm sorry, I need a second. I have uh, a second. Oh, thank you. Agenda item six is a request to appropriate an additional $805,000 from the DIF and award a contract to Sully Miller Construction for the low bid price of $4,375,235.78 for the construction of Air Expressway, reconstruction and widening Village Drive to National Trails Highway and Awesome Wash Channel Improvements and Air Expressway Water Pipeline Project. Questions or comments from members of the Council? There a second? second. Been moved and seconded. May we vote? Item 7 has already been continued to February the 5th, 2008, 7 o'clock, these chambers. Item 8 is a request to adopt the annual appropriations limit for fiscal year 0708. Uh, Roberts, are you going to make any presentation or have Mr. Sullivan make any presentation? Um, if the council uh, is so interested, the director of finance could make a presentation on this. This is a this is a standard action that we take that sets the appropriation limit. We certainly never spend anywhere near this amount of money each year. I'd move the item. Been moved and seconded. May we vote? Well, Mr. Sullivan, you dodged a bullet. I was, <laughs> I was trying to finesse a way to get you up to the podium. I knew he was. For your baptism under fire, but uh, you owe the city manager big time. Probably I'll right get you. <laughs> I'll keep trying to save you. Agenda item 9, proposed resolution 08037. If adopted, would certify the city of Victorville has the resources to fund the projects submitted for inclusion in the fiscal year 0809, 1314 Transportation Improvement Program and affirming its commitment to implement all of the projects submitted in the program. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. May we vote? Unanimous. Item 10, request to approve an additional appropriation of $50,000 from the general fund and authorize the staff to proceed with the abandonment and demolition of Forest Park. I'll move that item quickly. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. Mr. Gard, do you feel a, a necessity to uh... argue against that? <laughs> I want to know. Oh, so I think you're good. Well, how are we going to demolish it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could find somebody to do it for less than 50 grand. He's coming up. We'll want to save some of the trees. Uh, Mayor, Council, <laughs> uh, for many years it's been obvious that the uh, Forest Park is no longer used uh, as a recreation uh, site. And the continued uh, overhead of maintaining it as well as repairing other damage that's always done to it, um, it, it has become, um, you know, a, a quite a problem for us. And I know um, talking to um, Mr. Metzler, our Director of Economic Development, uh, that this site uh, can be help to be a catalyst for the revitalization of Old Town in combination with the, uh, the property that had burnt to the ground and we leveled uh, you know, and cleared that building where the tricks and tracks was. And so the, the motion was to be able to, to abandon the park and go ahead and do a, a study on the environmental cleanup and get that and then, and then take it down the dirt and fence it off. Now, we, we would just leave the spaces, the parking spaces that are promised um, by contract to Amtrak for the service of, of the Amtrak um, platform there. Further questions or comments? <laughs> well, first we got to vote. Uh, do we have a motion? We already did. Have a second? Let's vote. 
can go out there tonight if you want, Mr. Gardner. Agenda <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> item 11. It's a request to appoint two council members to serve on the Housing and Community Development, HCD Grants Review Committee. I understand I have two volunteers, Mayor Pro Tem Allman and Councilman Cabriales. Oh, no, I think Mike I'm, I'm okay do with it. it. Okay. Mike, oh, you want to do it? I was going to volunteer. Yeah. Okay, you're going to volunteer? You were in the military like some of us. You never volunteered. He was in the Navy. I was Oh, that's right. He was in the Navy. Navy. He doesn't Ooh. understand. <laughs> I'll, I'll move uh, Mr. Mr. Rothschild and Mr. Cabriellis. You're off the hook. Yes. All right. It's, uh, it's the Navy guy and the Army guy. Oh, that would be good. Oh. No, no, no. What was, what was your reserve status? Oh, Army. Uh, Army. When we, Real one with the Marines. Ooh, right. What was your last military assignment? Army. That's okay, Bob. Was it was your first it. military assignment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Army was the best, is the best. We'll continue. Oh, God. Yeah, here we go. Oh. Guess who my husband was. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good guy. Yes. Sometimes. Okay, council reports. Councilman Cabriales. Um, Mayor Caldwell, I'm sorry. I'm missing three votes on the last item. Uh-oh. I need I'm yours. I'm so excited. Not mine. All right. Council Member Allman and Council Member Cabriales. Thank you. The Army guys don't know how to push the button. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Council reports, Mr. Cabriales? Uh, none. Bowman? None, thank you. Mr. Hunter? Uh, just one item. I understand that the DIF fee uh, item is on the next agenda for February. February 5th. Uh, I would like to recommend that we make that possibly a workshop instead of just an uh, agenda item for the dais. I think it's going to need more discussion than just dais work. Well, I think you're right, and uh, I'm wondering if maybe we ought to pull it off and, and do it on a separate evening. Yeah. It, it always ends up with, you know, a lot of people wanting to talk. Yeah, no, I agree. I think there's, it's going to be probably a very spirited conversation with this council and, and members of the uh, building development with the economy the way it is and things that are going on. I think we've got to be prepared to, to really discuss it. But why don't we ask the city clerk to contact each of us tomorrow when we have our calendars and pick uh, perhaps a six o'clock time frame uh, and devote specifically to the diff fee issue. Good for me. Rothschild? The only thing I have to report is last night I met with uh, Mayor Tim Jasper from the town of Apple Valley and uh, committee uh, Thurston from city of Hesperia and we were supposed to have Mayor Jim Neemans who was en route but got hung up and then we got done before he got there. But it's the first of what's going to become uh, a fairly frequent uh, get together of the mayors of uh, the four cities to discuss common problems. Uh, the primary topic that we discussed last night was trying to reach uh, a consensus on priorities uh, for transportation funding. Uh, Mayor Jasper is going back to Washington to meet with the Congressman McKeon, Congressman Lewis and, and other uh, people involved with the transportation funding mechanism. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to report to you that uh, we did reach a consensus with regard to our, our united commitment for the E-220 corridor and bodes well for the Victor Valley when the cities can sit down and discuss competing projects but reach consensus on projects of regional significance. So I, I was very pleased and I, I look forward to having uh, these meetings with the other mayors on an ongoing basis. That's the only thing that I have to report. Add on to that discussion you just had, that E-220 actually, there isn't a, uh, a community and the unincorporated area in the Victor Valley that isn't affected by the E-220. Because remember, the E-220 isn't just a connection from uh, SCLA to uh, Palmdale, Lancaster. It also loops around the backside. They're talking about our, our the, uh, Valley Loop. It's a loop that goes all the way around the Highway 18 of Beltway. Around, uh, Beltway and Hesperia but, abuts that intersection down there too as well. So everybody's affected by the E220. It is a, a common interest item. But we did discuss the Beltway concept or the loop, whatever we choose to call it, and there, there seemed to be a great interest in that from, uh, from the representatives of our sister cities. Um, part of what we all agreed to do is really support each other's other projects. And we can't just, you know, pick one thing, as important as it may be from a regional significant standpoint, 
And uh, Asperia, of course, is concerned about having access uh, once their Summit Valley project goes through, <coughs> and so uh, that's a legitimate issue. We, uh, say we, the folks of us in the meeting last night, agreed that, that we would support Hesperia in whatever way we can uh, to uh, meet the funding needs for that and, and for Ranchero Road. And of course, Apple Valley's uh, Falchon Road project is, is very critical to them, but they all in one fashion or another connect to uh, the 220 through the Beltway or the, or the Loop Road concept at some point. So uh, I think we ought to make sure that from a planning standpoint and from an engineering standpoint, we start moving quickly to identify probable locations for Beltway or this loop, whatever we're going to call it, so that we can make the proper land use decisions now uh, rather than later. And that will give uh, my short little Irish friend, Engineer McGlade, <laughs> some more work to do because I know he's just getting bored now that the economy's in the doldrums. So uh, this will give you something else to think about to, and work on. That's all I have. There are no closed session items tonight. And uh, Steve Martinowski, is there anything that you need to say for the record to keep us out of trouble? Nope. Can't believe it. <laughs> nope. That's a good one. Robert, as the uh, commander in chief, do you have any uh, pearls of wisdom to share with us tonight? Good night and God bless. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. The meetings are adjourned. <laughs>